Is there anybody here that has chaos in their life? Ooh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Is there anybody here that is absolutely sure about their life's path, about where you're going to be in the next 30 years? Okay, a few of you. Now let me see if I can really rattle you. Is there anybody here unsure about what they want to be when they grow up? Where you want to be in a year? How about five years? How about 40 years? Okay. You all know about entropy, right? Entropy is the universal tendency towards disorder, disorganization, disintegration, and chaos. Sir Isaac Newton had the law of increased entropy, which stated that the total entropy of any isolated system, meaning you or me, increases over time, basically achieves a maximum value. Entropy happens. Chaos in life happens. Life just throws you into chaos. Things get screwed up, don't they? The joy of life and chaos is that it also gives you these, these people or these things that, that help you either into or out of this chaos, these kindred spirits, if you will, whether good or bad. So you're all sitting here, dressed pretty nicely, actually. You seem to have survived the chaos that we talked about pretty much unscathed. It's a good thing. I'm now going to take you back in time. I've got a really big time machine. You ready? Boop! Here we go. <laughs> we are now back in my college career in the 80s, the 1980s. <laughs> How many of you are about that place, about that age? OK. Some of you graduate. OK. So growing up, I loved animals. I had every sort of pet, snakes, dogs, horses, you name it, I had it as a pet. So I thought, gee, you know what? I would be a great veterinarian. So sure enough, with great enthusiasm, I went to the freshman program at the University of Albany in Albany, New York. I was 17. I was from Syracuse, New York. So first year jitters. Halfway through my freshman semester, my mom found out she had brain cancer, a really nasty, aggressive astrocytoma. I left school. I moved home. I, I had younger brothers that needed to be taken care of. Life threw my mom and our family into total chaos that we didn't expect. The doctor gave my mom a 10% chance of making it off the surgery table. Waiting for that day was horrible. My mom was so scared. I would find her on the back porch in the middle of the night, in the middle of her chaos, just crying. We were all in chaos as a family. Night before the surgery, this woman came into my mom's hospital room, this kindred spirit. She said to my mom, you know, I, I had had a brain tumor as well, and I had it removed, and I'm okay. I'm going to tell you, it's all going to be okay. With that, she left. So I, I followed her out, said goodbye to her, came back, and my mom was peacefully asleep. The first time since her diagnosis three months prior. Everything was OK. She survived the surgery, albeit with some deficits afterwards, lots of chaos, lots of physical therapy, occupational therapy, all kinds of therapies. But she made it. At that point, I had no idea what I was doing. So I thought, well, I'll volunteer with a local veterinarian just to kind of get my life in order. So I did. One day, my little pet hamster, Sammy, who had kind of been my therapy hamster, got sick. So I brought this hamster to this veterinarian, old school doctor. As I walked in the door, Sammy died. The vet said to me, yeah, you're going to be a veterinarian, right? Yeah. You want to see why Sammy died? Um, OK. With that, he took my little therapy pet, put her in a pie plate, cut her from her chin to her pelvis, and opened her up. I stood there horrified. This vet said to me, this kindred spirit said to me, yep, an aneurysm, see? 
it was that exact moment I knew I did not want to be a veterinarian. <laughs> Next day, I went into my advisor's office, who was in the biology department at that point in time, pretty distraught. This kindred spirit guided me. She said, OK, biology is not your thing. You're pretty good in math. How about a math major? With that, I became a math major. As I left her office, she said to me, you know what, Barb? I'm sorry you're not going to be a veterinarian, but you have to follow your path. So I did. Became a math major, about three years later graduated. Had no idea what I was going to do with this math degree, because remember, I was going to be a, a veterinarian, right? So I went to my career office in my local school, or in my school, and I highly recommend that to any of you students. They put me in touch with an alumni. Alumni was in Boston. This kindred spirit helped me to get a job in Boston. Woohoo! I was moving. Chaos with that, though. I was about to begin my life, but I was leaving my family, my mom, my little brothers. They were OK, but I was torn. I left. Worked for about two years in Boston. Didn't like it. Felt unsettled. Didn't know why. Was unhappy. So one day, I, uh, I made this huge mistake on this report that went out to one of our biggest stakeholders. I screwed it up. My boss called me in, said, Barb, yep, you screwed it up. But then this kindred spirit said to me, you know what? You're not happy, are you? No, I said. I'm not happy. I, I screwed this up, but I screwed everything else up. I screwed up being here. I screwed up being in this place in this office. With that, I thought, well, OK. Let's try maybe another city. I, I researched. I got another job, moved to Philadelphia. At that point, I was about 23. Still not happy. Unsettled. <laughs> I had this lovely little neighbor in the apartment that I lived in. Her name was Ellie. Again, I was 23. Ellie was 92. <laughs> oh, Ellie. She, she had such great life experience. And she made a mean cup of coffee. I would sit with Ellie in the evenings, and we would just talk about life, basically. And Ellie used to tell me, Barb, you have to be happy and satisfied in, in what you're doing. And I wasn't. Two cities, two jobs, and I, I wasn't happy. This kindred spirit helped me to realize that. My defining moment, if you will, was also due to a cup of coffee. Where I sat in my cube in the office, I had this door, and it faced this communal coffee pot. So one day, I came in, and I was tired. It was in the afternoon, and I decided to make a, a pot of coffee. The day before, I had taken this exam that was part of my job, I had studied for months. I had been up late. You all know how this goes. And I was pretty sure I hadn't passed it. So I went over to this cup of coffee, this pot of coffee, to kind of console myself. Now, with this old-fashioned coffee pot, you take a big old pot of water, you pour it in the reservoir, right? You shove the coffee grounds in, and you push the on button. That's simple. What I didn't realize was that in the back is this sneaky little button that you can push that there makes 10 cups or 12 cups of coffee. Mine, apparently, on this fateful day, was on the 10-cup pot of coffee. So went back to my office, doing my work, waiting for my coffee to go. And all of a sudden, this executive, this big executive guy from down the hall, comes down. He would frequent the coffee pot pretty soon, or pretty often. Comes down, goes to the coffee pot. Now, he also didn't know the little trick about the 10-cup and the 12-cup pot. <laughs> he thought I had stolen the first cup of precious coffee out of this pot before it continued to fill to the top. <laughs> he turned in front of the entire office, walked in, and said, You idiot! You stole the first cup of coffee out of the pot! You are so stupid! I sat there. I had never talked to this person before. As Mr. Upset, Angry Coffee Executive Man kept going on his rant, I was thinking in my brain, you're really unhappy. I realized my job at that point where I was unsettled was on the same track as his. I did not want to be him. Amazing that a cup of coffee can 
make a life choice for you, huh? So there I was without a job. <laughs> I ended up going to a local university in Philadelphia, went to their career center, and took an interest test. What kept coming up was either physical therapist or funeral director. <laughs> So in meeting with this wonderful kindred spirit, this, this career person, she said to me, she goes, Barb, you know what? You're just in the wrong profession. That's all. <laughs> wow. She nailed it. She was right. I was in the wrong profession. I knew a couple of things. I, I knew I was unhappy. I knew now I was in the wrong profession. And I knew I did not want to be a funeral director. So physical therapy it is. I researched. I then followed my mom's physical therapist. I loved what she did. I loved her interaction with patients. I loved everything about it. So this kindred spirit guided me towards physical therapy into more chaos. I moved home again, because again, no job, no way to support myself. After I moved home, my mom was diagnosed with a second round of brain cancer. These kindred spirits, these people, they had thrown me off my path. They had just messed up my life to bring me right back where I was supposed to be. My mom survived, albeit with some deficits. The really cool thing about being home was that I met my husband of now 26 years in the midst of all this chaos of not knowing if what I was doing was even possible, if I had to get into grad school was a thing, I met the best kindred spirit ever. Funny how things work out, huh? So I got into PT school. We moved back to Philadelphia. We got married. And in due time, we had our blessing, our first son right smack dab in my third year of physical therapy master's school in the last three months of my program. So chaos, as good as it is, happens. You just have to push through. Things wound up being really OK. I had to push my graduation back. I had to push my boards back. I had to push my job back. However, it wound up being OK. I eventually got my license. And I got to work in a really cool hospital, local, with a great daycare for our son and then later on our daughter. Funny how things work out. As a physical therapy professor here, I use a lot of what I've talked about to help guide my students. Many of you sitting here by the show of hands are in the same spot, kind of trying to figure out the chaos and where you're supposed to go. Your chaos and your kindred spirits are your path. Chaos, uh, craziness, it's going to happen. Change is OK. Chaos is really OK. It puts you right where you need to be when you need to be there. As your kindred spirit, I'm going to tell you, to relax, breathe, and embrace your chaos. It will guide you right where you need to be at the very exact time you need to be there. As your kindred spirit, I'm going to tell you, it's really going to be OK. Thank you. <laughs>